Welcome back to another episode of the Soccer Stories Podcast. I'm Brian McDonough, and on today's episode, we are joined by the young New York Red Bull sensation, Serge Goma. Serge Goma is now 18 years old, but he was only 16 years old when he scored his first ever goal for the New York Red Bulls. The third youngest goal scorer in New York Red Bulls history joins us today to talk about his MLS career thus far, his upbringing, and what things we can expect from him in this upcoming 2024 season. So, Serge, how's it going, man? Good. It's going great. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, thanks for joining me. Um, no, of course. Let's start it off. You know, you're out in California for spring training, right, for the Red Bulls. So, yeah, we're in, uh, we're in Palm Springs right now. How's that, first and foremost? Um, I thought it was going to be a bit warmer, <laughs> but yeah. um, no, nah, it's, going, it's going great. It's going great on me. So, yeah, take me into kind of the life of a Red Bulls player right now, your life. Uh, what was today like? You know, kind of like walk me through the schedule, typical day of spring training. Um, well, breakfast is 7.30, 7.30 to, to 9. Um, you, know, you wake up and you can go at any time between then. Then we're out to training. Uh, today we we're out by 9.25. Um, got there around 10. Training is at 10. So, Yeah. It's a busy, it's a busy, it's a busy day. And then we go back for a second session later. Yeah. You have another session later. Yeah. So we have two sessions, two sessions a day, mostly. And then days before games is normally one session. Wow. Okay. And you're finding some time for me right now, which I appreciate too. So. Yeah, of course, man. You save time for the best, huh? Yeah, we are. No, I appreciate it. We're having some technical difficulties here. So it's good to finally have you on. And um, yeah. Yeah, man, I, let's talk about the Rebels and the new face of the Rebels in terms of new coach, new season. Mm -hmm. um, you're obviously coming back, you know, off of some injuries last season. So what does it feel yeah. like for you um, to get this, you know, spring training under your belt? I mean, it's amazing. I think this is the, the last year, uh, at the end of the year, you know, that was the first time in a little bit that I was able to go into an offseason healthy um, and was able to work on certain things and be able to fine tune certain things. and. That was something that was important to me and important for me to, for my growth, you know, and um, yeah, that's definitely helped me coming into the, coming into the new season with the, in the preseason and getting a full preseason with the boys and um, getting yeah. to, yeah, learn, learn some new tactics from the coach and everything like that. So, I mean, that's, it's been a true blessing uh, to say the least. That's great to hear. So new coach, like, What's the attitude like? What's the, what are the changes like? How how is the squad feeling right now going into this season? Um. Well, we're not short on intensity. I say that. Okay. You know, we. It's uh. I guess the culture that he's trying to bring in is just doing every, doing everything with intent, right? Intent and intensity, right? So that's something that's preached from you know all the way down through our Red Bulls all the way to the academies uh, since I've been here. And that's something that I guess we live by, right? And yeah. he's brought that and he's brought that energy with him. And that's been something that's been important for us and it's helped us in games. So intent and intensity, I like that. Uh, you know, I was looking mm -hmm. at kind of your background, listening to some of the podcasts that you've been featured on and different things on YouTube here and there. It seems like you've lived your career so far with intent and intensity, I'd say. Like yeah. you've had a lot of success every step of the way. Let's talk about that. Um, if you don't mind, just kind of, you know, I think you said in in high school you, you were born when you were younger, you were a wrestler at some point. Um, talk about that side of your life and kind of your sporting experience. And if you don't mind me taking taking me back to when you kind of knew soccer was a sport for you and in the right path. Yeah. Um, so I did wrestling all the way from, I think, first grade to – Seventh grade, okay. Yeah, first grade to seventh grade, or eighth grade, one of the two. But um, that was my winter sport, so that wasn't my like my first sport or anything like that. But I think I would say I was gifted physically, um, and I was able to do really well in wrestling. And the, the thing about wrestling is, it's just you and the other person, right? Yeah. So yeah. When you're when you're on that mat, there's nobody else to blame for your loss. There's nobody else to blame for a mistake other than yourself, right? And so I think that's been something that's been really important for me and taking that with me into into the soccer world, right? Soccer, football. Um, yeah, I think that's 
that wrestling has helped shape my mentality definitely um yeah yeah, yeah so that's interesting that's cool i think it's uh uniquely in a way an american thing where we kind of have multiple sporting experiences be be yeah. before we find our way right so I when was it <laughs> was that yeah so that was good too yeah <laughs> yeah and you were good too right that's that could yeah. have been a potential path for you where it could have been who knows maybe you competing at the olympics definitely pop probably d1 something like that uh mm -hmm. here you are now though professional footballer professional soccer player when did you realize that this could be a potential path for you like what was there a defining moment when you realized that you were uniquely gifted let's say um i'd say i always, I'd, I always loved i always loved football right and i always loved playing and and ever since i was young you know i started when i was three i told that story a few times but and with my dad, right? And I just fell in love with the game right away. I think the moment I realized that this was something that I wanted to do as a career, um, I mean, when you're a kid, you always say, oh, I want to be a professional. I think it really clicked for me when I was maybe like 10 and I went to England with this, on this trip with this, um, it's like an organization, I guess, uh, Sporting 11. We went sure. on a trip to, to England, uh, to London, right? We got to go watch all these different teams play uh, in the big stadiums, right? And you got to see that it's a culture over there, right? You got to see that that's just their way of life. Uh, you know, you have cops down the middle of the of the two, yeah. other two supporter sections, you know, and you, you can feel it, right? You can feel how, how amazing it is, but... What really clicked for me was when I was hearing about how these players would go pro at 16, 15, right? And how serious they took it. Um, I went over with my mom and my mom even was like, like, wow, this is, you know, this is something that, that could be, so, that could be serious for you, right? And something that yeah. she, she understood that in order to have that advantage, you know, you have to start younger. And she's an educator, right? And so she was, wanted me to stay in school. That was her mindset um, before going over there and everything. And, but that's, that's the thing when everything shifted for me and also for my family. That's so interesting. I think it's so important people remember that too, right? Like the, the sport here at a professional yeah. level, you know, MLS is still young, right? And, you know, supporter yeah, culture, yeah. You, you see, you see with the rebels, you know, um, great, great supporter culture, you know, uh, but in, in terms of Red Bull Arena and it's like, in my opinion, it's like the Mecca of soccer, right? Like a beautiful stadium. Um, I think it's one of the best MLS personally. Um, but, you know, the clubs over in Europe, they go back hundred, you know, over a hundred years, most of them. Right. So when you're in London, it's a whole different, whole different ball ballgame. Um, do you, is there any team over that you still kind of support in particular? Like, you know, any clubs that made a lasting impression on you that you, uh, um, not from that trip, no, but I'd say I mean, the first game that I ever went to was um, was a Chelsea game. Chelsea, AC okay. Milan, at MetLife Stadium, they came for the ICC, the ICC Cup. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I like the blue, and they won that game, so, so I, had to be, yeah. I had to be a Chelsea fan. Awesome. Do you have any players like footballers that you looked up to growing up? Um, messy. I mean, I feel like that's the but, most basic answer, but <laughs> but yeah, it'd have to be messy. You know, I got introduced to Messi when I was in my when I was in second grade. Some kids in my school were, I guess, watching highlights and talking about him, and we had to do a report in about just a famous person, and so I did. I did, I did Lionel Messi, and I have that report to this day. But, I don't know, the way the guy plays the game and the way he is as a person as well is something that's really admirable and something that, you know, I, I respect a lot. And I think everybody wanted to be like Messi at some point in their life, you know? <laughs> so, that was, so second grade you did that report? Second grade, yeah. So what if – and now it's the crazy full circle. I think you know what I'm already going to say. If I had told you in second grade that you would be playing in the same professional league as Lionel Messi, what would you have said? It called me crazy, man. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think to share to share a field with somebody who's 
a walking legend in a sense. Yeah. You know, you can say is is truly a blessing, right? To and you talk about full circle, full circle moments and everything. Like it's it's amazing to see, and amazing to see how somebody of that stature moves around on the pitch, right? What they're looking at, um, like how he finds the feel for the game. It's impressive, you know. And I mean, all I can say is that I'm I'm blessed to to share to share a field and to be able to play against somebody like that, you know. Yeah, you're de- you're definitely living out um, most yeah. of this world's dream in that in that, in that yeah. sense for sure, because he's a walking legend. You know, you mentioned yeah. uh, Chelsea, and um, you mentioned how that was kind of a club that uh, you know you saw play over mm-hmm. here, and uh, you've you have a like you know you like your you support, I guess you could say. Um, yeah. But the Red Bull Academy had that famous win mm-hmm. years back where they actually beat Chelsea in a uh, summer friendly. A, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Were you? Do you remember that moment? Were you watching? Like what? I don't know. <laughs> I just know that Tyler Adams scored. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just I just remember Tyler Adams scoring the goal. I don't remember much of the game. I just remember yeah. Tyler Adams scoring and and that's winning that game. And that's the thing. Like the Red Bull Academy system has produced so many talented players, right? So what what did it mean mm-hmm. for you to go through the academy system <clears throat> to get signed by Red Bull? You know, in North Plainfield, New Jersey, local. Yeah. Um, what did that mean? I can, I mean, it meant a lot. You know, um, I think the moment that I put the, the pen to the paper, um, you have sort of like a flashback of all the moments that you that you've had in the academy, right? And all the friends that I've made, and just you know what I hope to do with the first team, right? Um, yeah. I'd say that I think scoring my goal, uh, scoring my first goal against Atlanta. After that, and after being like going to my family, and I went over after the game to my dad and my sister and my mom. I think that was probably one of the more uh, one of the more touching moments of my career, I'd say. Um, yeah. Just because I feel like even before that, I had dealt with uh, I was dealing with a hamstring injury, and that was I think my second game back from that. And I think scoring that goal it was like like a breath of fresh air. Right, it was like I worked hard to get here, get to get through the academy, come up. Right, and you see people do it before you. Right, you see Tyler Adams do it. Um, you see somebody like Jay might do it. Um, Omir, all these, all these, all these players that come from the academy, and you see them do it, and then to be able to say, oh, I was able to, I was able to, you know, I was able to contribute to a game in the first team. Right, that was, yeah. that was something that was, that was something that was really important to me. Yeah. So yeah, you, you were still 17 at the time when you scored that goal, right? So you were the I was 16. 16, 16 at the 16 at the time. 16 it was two. Yeah, it was two 16. summers ago, 2022. So yeah. you were the third. I believe you were the third youngest Red Bulls player to, yeah. to ever score a goal, right? Yeah. yeah. What What was going for, through your mind at that moment? Can you remember, like when that when that ball hit the back of the net? Like I said, I think it was just relief. Yeah, just really. Um, yeah. yeah, it was it was a lot of relief, and I think once I scored that goal, I realized I was like, yeah, I can, I can score, right? I can score, I can score in this league, and it's something that I can do in this league, right? And I think that was just some of the confidence that I needed from that. Yeah. So you came back from that, you know, injury, and then obviously, unfortunately, last year you dealt with a lot of injury, and now this year, yeah. you know. You're healthy here in in preseason. Um, mm-hmm. What's like the what's the one thing you've learned through battling injury? Like, do you think it's made you a stronger player in certain ways? Like dealing with adversity, um, would you say? I would say, yeah. I think before, um, I think before going through these injuries and everything, you kind of, you know, you just coast a little bit and you don't take all the preparation stuff um, okay serious, right? But I think getting injured makes you appreciate playing, you know, it made me appreciate playing definitely. And um, it just made me more aware, I guess, of, of my body, right? Knowing 
what I need to do, what I need to do here and here. But as a, as to for toughness, or right, um, I don't know. Like I said, I think that came. I think that came from wrestling. Um, I okay. think I go back to that. Really, I think I've had that from when I was young. I mean, all the way up. My dad, my dad has always told me that like nobody's gonna give you anything, right? And nobody's gonna like once you get injured, nobody's gonna nobody. You're not in the conversation as per se, yeah. right? Because I mean, you can't play, right? But those words always stick with me and they make me work extra hard, right? To make sure that I come back. And I was able to come back a few times and then I got injured again. But for me, that means nothing, right? Because I know that I'm going to end up being back again. So, yeah. Yeah, it's that, it's that mentality. So you, like, I like that, the wrestling mentality. It's kind of like if you get knocked down, you get right back up, right? That's, yeah. what, that's what it's all about. Somebody and, scores points on you, you know, you got to go score some points on them. Exactly. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yes. That's kind of a narrative in your mind. I like that, that you kind of think back to those days of wrestling. Um, well then, okay. So now, you know, new season, new identity with a new coach. We're kind of bringing everything back to where we started in a little bit. Um, what can we expect from you this season? Like if, you know, for anyone tuning in, you know, you're a young player and you've had a lot of success for a young player, you know, being 18 years old mm -hmm. now. Um, but someone this season who might be watching you for the first time, what type of player are you? Like describe kind of your, your skill set and what, what you bring on the field. Um, I'd say that I'm dynamic. Um, so I'm pretty hardworking. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm a team player, right? Whether it's a goal, an assist, or a tackle, or anything that I can do to help my team win is something that I want to do, you know? And I don't know. I think I, I played for this club for a long time, right? Not at the professional level for a long time, but for this club. And I think I've been I've been a fan of the club, right? And I've been a player in the club. I think I give everything for the club. So yeah, I hope that when somebody's watching me play, they can see that I do love this club very much. And and yeah, I I bleed red. Red runs deep. <laughs> Yeah, you're, so you're bringing it, yeah, every day, every day in practice, like you said, you kind of yeah. have that mentality. Um, that's great. So, I mean, if you had to like set a goal for yourself for the next, for this season or the upcoming seasons, you know, I, I've mm -hmm. I've heard you describe like any, you know, any level you've been at, you've scored goals. So, is there a certain number that you're aiming for? Is it double digits? Like, what, just you're just going in, or is it anything to kind of just impact the game so the team wins? Um, I'd say. I mean, everybody has their goal for how many goals they want to score for sure. But I think for me, I just go into it, just get the next one, right? Yeah. I score, get the next one, then get the next one, then get the next one. It's I just want to make sure that I'm scoring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right, a couple more questions. I was, you know, I did this actually to Chris Donovan, who, you know, was the young striker for the union. I asked him some questions about the clubhouse, the locker room. And I'll ask you the mm -hmm. same thing. Okay. So, best dressed New York Red Bulls player. <laughs> okay. That's going to have to go to Lewis Morgan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I would say that I, I like how I dress a lot, but I give it to Lewis. Yeah. You give it to Lewis? No. Yeah. Do you think Lewis would give it to you if the, if the tables were switched and you? you nah, I think nah. Lewis. Lewis. Lewis puts it on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. How about best dancer? Who has the best, best move? Dancer, Kyle Duncan, hands down. Kyle Duncan. Okay. Yeah. So is he usually just bringing it pregame, postgame? Is it like just at random times at training? It's always dancing. You put a song on this guy, you know, he starts moving. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How about, uh, like, is there, like, a locker room comedian or someone who's just hilarious who gets the team going? Um, I'd say Ryan Mayer is really funny. Uh, Sean Neal is Frankie. Yeah. Kyle is funny. I think, I, think, I don't know, we have a lot of funny people on the team. Yeah, yeah. 
And last thing, when it comes to these questions, I guess, like, who's running the aux? Like, who's who's kind of controlling the music? Um, right now, it goes in between people. It will be either me, Andres, uh, Cooch. I don't know. It, it jumps around. It jumps around right now. We haven't really found a single person to get on the aux, but we got to lock that in, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to lock that in. Yeah. And a couple, couple, couple more questions. You know, number twenty-two. You know, I'm looking at your jersey number. Is there a story behind that, yeah. or is it just? Yeah, yeah. Um, so my grandmother, um, to somebody who I love very much, and unfortunately, she passed away in um, in 2020. Uh, she, okay. you know, she passed away on November 22nd, and so. I had 22 in the academy, and that wasn't really related to it. But when I started going, or when I got when I signed and I went to the first preseason, I asked if 22 was available for me to take, and they said yeah. And yeah. so I just I just kept it. That's great, and yeah. you know, going off of that, then being a homegrown player, being in the area. Um, What's it like having your family at the games or just being close by? I mean, I think as a professional athlete, you're you're truly blessed for that too, because I think it's yeah, it can be, it's a tough transition, right? Becoming a professional. Mm -hmm. What what have they been like in your life, like uh, just as support? I think being able to go home after you know after if you don't have a training session that you particularly yeah. like, <laughs> um, or a game that didn't go your way. Being able to always return home and you know have a home cooked meal, and also to be embraced by you know your mom or you know being embraced by your dad and all that stuff is that's something that's special, right? And I'm big on family, and I love my family very much. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm really happy that I've had them at the beginning of my career, of my career to you know talk to them about my struggles and all this other stuff that I'm. That, you know, I've gone through. I'm blessed to have been able to have them as, as a support group. All right. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, last question. This might be the most important question then, because you kind of led okay. me to this. If I'm at the if I'm at the Guma household, then oh. what is what is the best home cooked meal? So, what is oh. what is your mom or or is your mom cooking or your dad's cooking? Like, who's cooking? And both. or is it a collaborative effort? Okay, it's both. Yeah, both and, and what what are we eating? Like, what's what's all what's on the menu? You like ribs? I love ribs. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a story. I don't eat pork. My family doesn't eat pork, but my dad supposedly makes the best ribs. So, every anybody who eats ribs somehow loves his ribs. But none of us eat his. None of us eat pork. So if you came to our house and you like ribs. I'll have to make some ribs. <laughs> oh, that but, sounds um, awesome. My, I'd say, I'd say my favorite dish is my mom makes this red chicken. Um, okay. It's a red chicken, I guess, with tomato sauce, but she adds stuff to it. I don't know what it is, but she adds. It. <laughs> it's like a secret, it secret takes, recipe, or I guess I don't know, but it's that with some white rice and some broccoli. Or some what? She makes good Brussels sprout. Just some vegetable. That's my that's my favorite dish. Yeah. And I, I have too many. I could go on for a while talking about my my parents' food. <laughs> about your your yeah, family's food. Well Yeah. 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 Well, man, it, so it sounds like you're blessed in many ways. You know, a young player for the New York Rebels, have a great family, um, playing for a great club. And um, I'm blessed for having you on the podcast. So I really appreciate your time, oh, thank man. You, man. Oh, and no, um, thanks for having me. Yeah. Of course, best wishes this season. Um, I'm looking thank I'm you. looking forward to you doing big things. So thank you again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Of course. I'm going to make sure uh, I continue to watch your podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, man. Well, take care. Thank you. Once again, that was Serge Goma of the New York Rebels. Guys, thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Soccer Stories podcast. As always, if you're watching on YouTube, then make sure to hit like and subscribe. And if you're listening on Apple, Google, Amazon, Spotify, wherever it may be, thank you so much for your support. 
please make sure to leave a positive review if you enjoyed this episode. And until next time, stay safe, everyone.